What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Danny and Bush coming at you with episode 50 of Dynasty Decisions. We really appreciate the support you guys have shown for this series. 50 episodes strong. Basically, when we started this series, it was rate my Dynasty team. We didn't know if anybody was going to like it. Then you guys really latched onto it. We named it Dynasty Decisions, and the rest is history. So to celebrate our 50th episode, as we've teased pretty much all week, we're doing a Dynasty Decisions week. To clear out our queue, you guys have been sending us submissions fast and furious, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, so we're getting rid of a bunch of them by getting them done for you guys today. And as promised, we will be giving away $100 Amazon gift card to wh whatever country you're from, USD, Canada, whatever, um, to one lucky commenter from the previous videos. You guys would have commented down below Dynasty Decisions all week, and you had to DM us on uh, Twitter on the Fantasy Stock Exchange Twitter with proof of subscription, proof that you're following us, and proof that you commented. So if you commented Dynasty Decisions on the previous video and you don't see your name on here, you had to DM us to let us know that you did that. So um, we are going to spin the wheel here. Uh, before we get into the video, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, Check out the Patreon, all that stuff, Underdog Fantasy. But let's hit the giveaway. All right, so we got all the names here. We are going to spin the wheel. Um, whoever wins will end up, you know, reaching out to you on Twitter or whatever and let you know that you win, or if you want to just, you know, comment down below that you won. But here we go. We're spinning the wheel. <laughs> we were going to do marbles, but uh, we couldn't get that downloaded in time. <laughs> yeah. All Good right. Hi. Congrats to Adam Mueller. We will reach out to you on Twitter. Hundred dollar Amazon gift card is headed your way. But before we get into the video, as always, let's hit the intro. All right, so the first team that we're going to start off with here is actually from AJ. He's got a couple uh, questions here, a couple trades that he made recently. He's getting the left side of both of these trades. The first trade, he trades away Chase Claypool and Tyler Higby in exchange for Dalton Schultz. I don't know the context of his team, but I'm assuming he's in a competitive window looking to upgrade at tight end. To me, this trade makes a whole lot of sense. Chase Claypool, we actually just got you know Matt Harmon's reception perception numbers out on Chase Claypool. They don't look too good, to be honest. So um, I know we were a lot like very high on Chase Claypool last offseason, but he might be kind of like a soft sell for us right now. And I think upgrading from Higby to Dalton Schultz, you're going probably from like a hopeful touchdown or bust tight end to a guy that should be in your lineup each and every week. Yeah, no, absolutely fine with this. Uh, Higby is realistically fodder at this point in his career. And if I'm looking for a tight end upgrade, like Dalton Schultz, if he's healthy this year, should be what a guaranteed top six or seven tight end at the worst. Like if he stays healthy, he's insulating that Cowboys offense. He's going to have scoring exposure. And as we saw last year, this was a tar uh, tight end that garnered over 100 targets. Now has even more of an opportunity to be a focal point in that offense uh, on that franchise tag. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine with making this move for Schultz. Yeah, so the second trade here, he gets uh, a package in exchange for Chris Olave and Michael Gallup. He gets Kareem Hunt, Irv Smith, Chase Claypool back in the 2023 second. So I don't know if this trade was made previous to the Dalton Schultz trade, but um, looking at this on face value, how do you kind of break this down to me? Claypool and Gallup is relatively similar. Maybe you throw in yeah. like Irv Smith to balance it out on the Gallup side. The question is, would you rather have Chris Olave or Kareem Hunt in a 2023 20, second is the way I would break this down. I think this is fair regardless. Uh, you know, I, I really like Chris Olave, but realistically, you know, we're assuming that 2023 20, seconds mid. So we'll say a mid 2023 20, second is maybe getting you a guy like Josh Downs. If you're pairing that with Kareem Hunt, who, I am relatively higher on the, than the market. I think Kareem Hunt is a, a very good standalone type of running back and B obviously has access to that inherent upside. If you were to get cut traded or if Nick Chubb were to miss any time. So in your situation, like if you need a back, like I, I don't mind making this type of move for a guy like Kareem Hunt. Cause I do think he's an undervalued asset. Yeah. And again, we, we don't know the context of your team, but I would imagine by both of these trades, this is more of like a win now contender type of uh, window that you're in here and, you know, selling off a guy coming off an ACL tear and a rookie wide receiver for guys that'll probably help you a little bit more this season does make a little bit of sense there. So uh, let's move on to S bears team. Another patron here, uh, 12 teams, super flex six point per passing touchdown, half PPR with a tight end premium. You guys can see his team on the screen there. Dak Prescott, Trey Lance and Tua Tonga Vailoa at quarterback. Pretty no, uh, pretty much nobody to speak of. Kenneth Gainwell is his RB1. Hunter Renfro, Michael Gallup, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, a wide receiver. Kyle Pitts mainly at tight end. So not a whole lot to build around outside of Kyle Pitts and the and the top quarterbacks there. 104, 105, 110, 111, or sorry, 112, 
in this draft class. He has four firsts in 2023, two seconds, three thirds, and then all of his picks in 2024. So uh, looking at this team, it's pretty clear the direction of it. Uh, you're tearing this thing down, productive struggle, looking to fill out probably mainly your wide receiver core with most of your picks this year with 104 and 105. Should be able to get a trail on Burks, a Garrett Wilson, 110, 112. Hopefully you can get, at, at minimum, you'll get Jahan Dotson, David Bell, but hopefully you can get like a Chris Olave, Jamison Williams to fall to you at 112, uh, 110 and then go like Dotson at 112. Yeah, no, uh, and I mean, looking at this deal, we'll, we'll just break it down quickly. Like if we're looking at it, I would say, Gainwell is probably about appropriate within, you know, what, the 208, let's just say. I mean, that's, that's a pretty easy type of comparison. So we'll say Gainwell and the 208 type of cancel each other out. Gallup is either the 111 or the 201, whatever you want to slice it. So, I mean, if you want to give the 111, you want to give it the 201. Let the other one be in the deal. So basically, you know, Gallup and Gainwell canceled out. We're looking at the 104, 105, and the 2021 for, let's just say, the 101, the 201, and the 207. I think that the 101 is probably about appropriate value right now with probably what the 104 and the 105. Like, would you give Garrett Wilson and Kenneth Walker if you're looking to like get a stud in Brees Hall? Yeah, I would, I would rather have the 104 and 105, I think, than, than Brees Hall. Yeah. So, I mean, like, and regardless, that's like about like appropriate if you were to make, you know, that type of transition. So we'll just say for E's sake that that would cancel. And then at that point, I mean, you got a 2023 first for the 201 and the 207. So, yeah, I, I do like your side here. I do like what you're able to receive. Yeah, that first deal is definitely good. Uh, we also give give away Clyde Edwards Hilaire. You love to see that. You get a 2023 second and a 2023 third. I think that's I'm fine value. I'm not yep. huge on Clyde Edwards Hilaire. So that's, I mean, maybe you want to hope for, you know, closer, uh, better value than that. But I think that's probably the best you're going to get for CH at this point in time. Also selling Juju, Miles Sanders, 104 and DJ Chark. And he ended up receiving uh, Dak Prescott and the 208. So uh, in a super flex league, I mean, Dak Prescott's got to be worth at least at least two firsts, I think, yes, here. And I, I don't see a ton of value to say that this is uh, worth two firsts, at least on the side that you gave up. The 104 is obviously a hard asset to part with. Um, but you do, I mean, Juju, DJ Chark, Miles Sanders, they're probably all worth like early second round type of value. Uh, yeah. Maybe not even for, for Miles Sanders and Chark. At, at best, Juju is worth an early second round or mid to late for the other two guys. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the Dak Prescott side is is the side that I want there. Yeah. The This, to me, a bunch of noise in the 104 for Dak Prescott. And quite frankly, like, yeah, I like Garrett Wilson. I like Traylon Burks. I like Kenneth Walker. But Dak Prescott, I mean, he is a top 15 startup pick. He is an insulated top quarterback asset. And this is as cheap of a price I've ever seen somebody be able to pay for a legitimate quarterback one in Dynasty. So, uh, yeah, give me Dak all day, every day here. Yeah, uh, 111 for Chase Claypool. Just just give me the re-roll on like Jahan yeah. Dotson or something like that. I would rather have Dotson than Claypool at this point in time. Uh, Alberto, Gabriel Davis, he tra uh, traded away in exchange for 2023 first. He's so high on two guys that have a lot of buzz around their names right now. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, giveaway Gallup, ETN, and the 401 for Claypool, 207, 2023 first, and a 2023 third. So again, I think this, this goes chronologically upwards. So I think we're reading these in reverse order. But um the way I break this kind of th this trade down here is to me, ETN is worth probably a 2023 first in the 207 is probably the way I would break that down. Gallup Claypool again, probably a wash there. And then you get a third versus a fourth. I think you, you net a little bit positive on that trade. I would say it's not a huge win, but I would say it's a, a slight, a slight positive win for you. Yeah, no, I, I agree there. Uh, I mean, realistically, you know, Gallup and Claypool kind of cancel each other out. <laughs> And then we're looking at it, ETN in the 401 versus a 207, 2023 third, and 2023 first. Um, I'll just take the package of picks there. I think, you know, ETN for a 2023 first is probably about relative value. So give me, obviously, the 207 and three, uh, 2023 third over the 401. Yeah, and then the final trade here, and again, we we did go in reverse order with these trades. Zach Wilson, <laughs> Cam Akers, and the 301 in exchange for Trey Lance, Donovan Peoples-Jones. So I personally would probably side with the Zach Wilson and Cam Akers side. Uh, Trey Lance and Zach Wilson, there's definitely a difference between those guys. Pretty but big. Donovan Peoples-Jones is probably not enough for me to, like, if, if you got a, if you got Trey Lance in a 2023 20, second, I think this trade would be a little bit more fair. But uh, I don't mind secure. You're, you're in a long-term rebuild. If you want to, if you think there's a big difference between Trey Lance and Zach Wilson, I know not a lot of people are high on Zach Wilson the way I am. So uh, if you're not, if you don't, if you think there's a big difference between those guys, I don't, I don't blame you for sure. And Trey Lance is more of that foundational quarterback. If you uh, want to secure a guy like that. In your position, I really like this. I mean, realistically, you know, DPJ, like, yeah, I would rather the 301, you know, DPJ is probably like a late third, but either way, like the 301 is not going to really deter me off of this package. So realistically, I mean, 
301, Donovan Peoples-Jones, mostly noise in this package. It's realistically Zach Wilson and Cam Akers for Trey Lance. Basically, what this is asking you is if you know your team is going to be rebuilding, if you know your team is going to be going through a productive struggle, would you trade a mid-fourth round startup pick and a mid-fifth round startup pick for an early second round startup pick? And from a pure investment standpoint, from a pure insulation standpoint, we know with Trey Lance, especially if you're a rebuilder, he has the opportunity to get into that top five, top seven overall startup pick range next year as long as he stays healthy and as long as he plays this season. So in your position, you don't need running back production. You don't need Cam Akers on your team because of the picks that you have, because of the liquidity that you built. I'm fine going out and getting the stud for that. Yeah, I think the difference for me in that trade is that I value Wilson as like a mid to late third round startup pick and Cam Akers is an early to mid fourth round startup pick. So it's just kind of a micro. It's just the players that you traded away is is my my qualm sure. with the trade because I, I like the players that you traded. So again, we went reverse order of the trades, but I think at face value, most of these trades, you definitely netted out positive. You're going to be able to add a lot of wide receivers to your core with the picks that you have this year. You have four first next year to probably fill out your running back core as well and your wide receivers will all be for the most part in their second seasons and stuff like that so um i think you're doing a good job so far um he he basically said just just evaluate his trades what moves should i be looking to make this upcoming season anybody that has value in season if kenneth gainwell is you know thrust into a starting role at any point boston scott tony jones like none of your running backs are probably going to net you anything but any of your wide receivers if will fuller signs with the cleveland browns or something like that and watson isn't suspended very long you might be able to flip him for like a second round pick i would just be looking to constantly churn out the fodder on your roster for any draft capital. Any value. Get. Like if, if LaVisca Chenault gets off to a hot start and you can package LaVisca Chenault in a three to go up to a two, go do that move. Sterling Shepard had a, a strong start last year. Maybe you can get somebody, especially at the beginning of the season, man. Like I bet you probably could have flipped Sterling Shepard after week like three for last two. year for a two. And people would have done it because they saw Sterling Shepard playing really well. And they're like, oh, he's got a single digit number now. So he's going to be better. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think any any fodder on your roster of your extra tight ends, not named Kyle Pitts, try and churn those guys for for future draft capital. And I would, in, I would also, we talked about it before with Tua. If anybody's really, really high on Tua in your league, because there is like a cult following for Tua for some reason, uh, maybe you can get a uh, good draft capital value out of Tua Tonga Vailoa as well. If somebody's willing to give you you know, 2023 first and a young receiver or something like that for Tua Tonga Vailoa. I don't mind giving up uh, Tua for that price because you have Prescott and Trey Lance to build around. I'd be willing to do it for a 2023 one straight up easily. Right. I but can. because he's a starting quarterback, you can probably get more than just a maybe. 2023 first for him. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I mean, like if you're going to build liquidity, if you're going to build, you know, your pick, your iron bank, if you will, having Prescott, Lance and Tua and also having Kyle Pitts, I mean, you know, the, the classic motto, FSC motto, as Corey said in the last video, picks and pits, baby. I mean, this is the exact way to start a productive struggle. So great job there from S Bears. We can move on to the next team. That's going to be from JD, a 12-team Superflex PPR League. Uh, quarterbacks, you got, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Matt Ryan, and Kenny Pickett there. Running backs, DeAndre Swift, Kareem Hunt, Tyler Algier, and some fodder as he lists here. Wide receivers, Cooper Cup, DJ Moore, Hollywood Brown, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, etc. There, tight ends, you have Travis Kelsey, you know, Bush's boy, along with only your 2023 third, but then all of your picks in 2024 and 2025, with your main question being just, if you can assess my team and let me know if there's anything you would do. So Corey, when you're looking at this team, when you're looking at its construction, what are your main thoughts? Yeah, I think this is a team that is well set up to compete right now. Um, because you have, you know, guys like Kelsey and Cooper Cup, who should be difference makers at their positions this year. He does say in the message that he knows he needs another running back, most likely if he's going to compete this year. I would say you don't necessarily need another running back. You could run like a hero RB with DeAndre Swift. But if you wanted to invest in another running back, I, I wouldn't blame you. The guy that I would look to use to invest in that running back would be Juju Smith-Schuster, 100% because I think you might be able to one-for-one one swap James Conner and Juju Smith-Schuster or something like that. And James Conner will have a big-time effect on your team if he's your RB2, instead of having to rely on Kareem Hunt, who might be a little boomer bust because of his role. Tyler Algier is a rookie fifth-round pick. We don't know necessarily what we're going to get. His other guys that he has here is like Dearness Johnson, Matt Breida, Darius Geis. They're not going to give you a whole lot at that position. I would say Watson getting suspended would really kind of hurt your competing window a little bit, though, because if he gets suspended the entire season, which is definitely in the range of outcomes um, as these cases continue to pile up for him, 
Mahomes, Matt Ryan, and Kenny Pickett will be enough to get you by, but I think missing out on that difference-making quarterback production that Deshaun Watson would give you if he was on the field might hurt your chances of competing depending on how good the rest of the uh, the teams in your league are. If this is like a new startup, then I think you can compete with this team, but if this is a you know fifth year in the league type of team, there might be some monsters that you're competing against. Yep, no, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, when you're looking at this team, realistically, like, yeah, it's a fine team. It's probably, you know, playoff caliber team. But, I mean, it's something that you'd probably want to make a transition to in season again. Like, if you get off to a hot start, as Corey was saying, you know, Cooper Cup is going to be a top three receiver. At, you know, top three to five wide receiver is yeah, what we're be expecting a top here. Three tight end. We think Swift has top five in the range. Uh, of upside. Sure, Mahomes will be a top five quarterback, most likely. If Watson plays, he should be a very yeah. – big difference maker there dj Moore and hollywood brown should give you very solid production as well those rookies might give you something also watson's status is going to be the biggest determinant of this team if watson you know is expected to be suspended you know eight games this year or for the season i'm looking to retool a little bit if you can sell high on cooper cup you know maybe get two ones or maybe get a one in a young receiver to uh supplement him again when you're ready to compete when watson is back is when you want to you know align your peak and give or take i mean if cooper cups 30 31 years old by the time you know watson is fully back ready to play football because you know who knows maybe he gets suspended the year maybe he gets suspended you know eight games this year and you know something happens in the offseason he's suspended a little bit next year who knows for you, you want to have as much information as possible before you're able to push those chips in. That's something I would look into. And again, if Watson is suspended this year for a, a prolonged period of time, the main guys I'm looking at potentially swapping and potentially getting, you know, pick value from would be a Cooper Cup and would be a Travis Kelsey. And again, you know, if Logan Thomas gets off to, you know, a top 10 tight end start and is getting fed targets coming off the injury and you could flip into another 20, 23 third. I mean, that's something you can look into in season as well. But my biggest advice is see where you're at, see what's up with the status of Watson and be able to align again, as I said, your peak window with Watson's availability on the field. Yeah. Again, if this is a new startup, I think you can compete with this team, assuming Watson's only suspended like eight games or something like that. But if this is a, a longstanding league, you got some yeah. monsters, you probably won't be able to compete. So it all depends on kind of your, because we can't see your league. So it all depends on your assessment, your standing in the league. If you determine, hey, my starting lineup is the second best in this league. My depth is pretty solid as well. Then I should be able to compete by all means compete. But if you look at your team and there's four monsters or two or three monsters in your league, then you're probably right to retool a little bit and try and build this thing up to be a little bit stronger in the future. So um, that's kind of the discretion you want to use with this team. It is definitely a bit of a, a murky situation to be in. Ideally, you just have young players that are all aligned with your winning window, but your team, a couple guys, um, put you in a competing window if you want to be there uh, for sure. So let's move on to the next team here. We got uh, TJ's team, a 12-team Superflex League. Uh, quarterbacks, Josh Allen, Tom Brady, Davis Mills, running backs, Najee Harris, uh, Elijah Mitchell, Damian Harris, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, Michael Carter, Debo Samuel, Hollywood Brown, Chase Claypool, Sky Moore, et cetera, at wide receiver. And then um, we have TJ Hawkins and Tyler Higby and Rob Gronkowski at tight end with two seconds in 2023, 2023 third as well. Didn't list his other picks in 2024, 2025, but I'm assuming he has them all. Um, just basically any tips for this roster. This, I mean, to me, having Tom Brady on your roster pretty much immediately tells me that you're trying to compete. Um, is this team good enough to compete with? No, it's not. You want me to be blunt? You want me to be honest? I mean, realistically with this team, you are... I mean, as much as I like Sky Moore as a player, he is still a rookie wide receiver. We still have to see that from him uh, to be a you know reliable option this year. Realistically, I mean, the only guys that you can rely upon for points this year would be those two quarterbacks, Najee Harris, Debo Samuel, Hollywood Brown, and TJ Hawkinson, with next to no depth after them. If you want to compete, you're going to be in for a steep road. Honestly, I mean, I don't want to say, you know, go full rebuild here, but that's kind of where I'm leaning right now. If you can get value from Nas, you can get value from Debo, you can get value from Hollywood, and somebody's willing to overpay for Hawkinson, as you know, you kind of we kind of outlined on the tight ends video that he is overvalued on the market right now. I would definitely want to retool, and that would start with trying to get your 2023 first back. Yeah, this this does kind of seem similar to the last team. That this is like a team where you have one piece. Like the last team had Travis Kelsey. You have Tom Brady. That indicates you're in just a winning window right away. This is a team, like like Danny said, that you would need a lot to break right for. You would need your depth to really become uh, cornerstone players for you during the season because, you know, if one of the Patriots running backs gets injured and the other one's like a workhorse, 
then that gives you a you know a really good RB2 and Elijah Mitchell's like in your flex. But if you start like three wide receivers and three flexes in this league, I mean, you're going to be starting like Kendrick Bourne every week, which is going to be tough if there's any, like I said with the last team, any monsters in this league. So if this is a new startup, again, I think you probably could compete with this team. This would be like a wait and see at midseason type of approach for me. If, if you're, you know, two and six at midseason, you sell Tom Brady, you sell any other players on your team that are having great seasons that are more contending type of pieces. But at this point in time, I, I would probably, I, I don't think I would tear this down in the off season. I think I would wait. Not in the off season. Yeah. Once I get into the season, yeah. how things are going. And again, make sure you make that evaluation of your league mates as well. Cause if you see a team that has, you know, Herbert, Joe Burrow, Javante Williams, DeAndre Swift, Brees Hall, like just a loaded team or two in your, in your league. And you're like, I can't beat these teams. Then I would probably, re, um, you know, be proactive and rebuild at that point. But if, if you're looking at your league and you're like, yeah, my team's, you know, pretty much just as good as anybody else's, then I would wait and see mid season. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. Um, again, though, like the, the, the depth is the main concern here. Like, yeah, some stuff can break right for this team, but like realistically, again, relying upon anybody in that running back core after Najee would be sketch. I get it. Like it, hopefully it's a PPR. Maybe you can get, you know, a cheap PPR back at some point to, like a McKissick type to help. I'm not really worried about the running back core. I think between Mitchell, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, and Michael Carter, you should be able to form a a solid RB2 and some decent flex production. My concern is after Debo and Hollywood Brown, you're relying on Ace Claypool and rookie wide receiver. I was, I was going to say the running back and the wide receiver. Like I I genuinely think like you're lacking consistent production at both those positions. Right. And And long term too, you're going to be lacking a quarterback because we don't know what Davis Mills is uh, job security is going to be like Tom Brady. I would expect him to retire after this year. Maybe you get uh, an extra year out of him, but you can't probably project Tom Brady for more than a year at a time. So um, yeah, definitely a little bit sketchy this season. I would say if you if you make the determination that you're just as good as any team in the league, I would probably try and go for it this year because you don't have your first number one and number two, you have Tom Brady. So once Tom Brady retires, if you don't win the championship this year, then you could probably fully rebuild this thing next year is the way I would probably approach this. All right, so we can get on to the non-patron questions and we can start it off with Quacka's team right here. You guys can see the team on the screen. Quarterbacks are headlined by Dak Prescott, Tua Tungabailoa, et cetera there. Running backs, Josh Jacobs, CEH, Daryl Henderson, and Jeff Wilson. Wide receiver, you know, you got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, C.D. Lamb, Rashad Bateman. Definitely a nice four stack there. And then some fodder. Uh, Tight end, you have Dawson Knox and Evan Ingram. Along with Garrett Wilson, David Bell, Wandale Robinson on your taxi squad. Along with your 2023, 1, 3, and 4. So um, overall, we'll look at this team. And then he does have a couple uh, questions slash trades that he has listed here. Yeah, looking at this team, it's obvious that you are just super loaded at wide receiver. Uh, Having all your picks definitely makes... um, you know, up for the fact that you do have a weak running back core. Josh Jacobs is really the only guy that you can rely on from like an in-season perspective. And your quarterback two and three is pretty sketchy as well. Outside of Dak Prescott, two is a guy that I would rather have as my quarterback three than my quarterback two personally. And even then I'm still like not extremely high on Tua Tungavailoa from a dynasty perspective. Um, Looking at this team, I think there's definitely some work to be done here. I would probably try and gauge the market and see what a quarterback upgrade would would cost you. I, I would see like, because you have so much depth, at wide receiver, I would see if you can go from like Tua and Garrett Wilson to like, I don't know, what kind of quarterback do you think you could get with that? That's Tua in the 104, 105 type of range. You should be able to get up to like Trey Lance with that. I would just, I was just about to say Trey Lance. Uh, This is also a uh, 10 man league. So, I mean, getting that stud quarterback is even more valuable to you here. Uh, Trey Lance would be the guy that I'm looking for here. If you can, again, as you, as you kind of said, package. Even if it costs Tua and Garrett Wilson, maybe you can get some a small little bit back if this guy is high on Tua. I don't know, but I'd be fine with giving Tua and basically the 104 this year straight up for Lance because that's how much I believe in Lance. But again, if the market is overreacting given the you know the Jimmy Garoppolo news and stuff like that, maybe you can get a little discount. Who knows? You float your league market, kind of see where the uh, the Lance owner is at on him. Yeah, for sure. I, I think this this team would be hard pressed to compete this year, given the 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 quarterback two and three situation, and the fact that Josh Jacobs is your only like main running back that's going to contribute to a high degree. This would be kind of like a house money year. You got a young team, you're able to build this out in the future draft classes. Let your wide receivers develop, and if some of your guys like Ceedee Lamb, Rashad Bateman, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, all of those guys have the chance to be in the top 10 dynasty wide receivers this time next year. And some of them already are obviously with three of those guys in the top five, I would also potentially try and sell one of the Bengals wide receivers. If uh, if it costs you, you know, a lot, obviously you don't want to lose those guys. They're obviously very good assets, but if you can transition T Higgins 
like I said, with Tua Tonga Bailoa, maybe you can get up to Kyler Murray with that if you trade T. Higgins and Tua Tonga Bailoa. Yep. No, I, I mean, if you can do that, by all means, uh, you have a lot of flexibility with how you built out that wide receiver core. Uh, great job there, too. Um, yeah, just stay the course. And I mean, realistically, I mean, that 2023 one should be, I would say, mid this year while still having a better outlook long term. If you can add, like, you know, long term, maybe a, uh, like, say you make that move to uh, and Garrett Wilson to go out for a quarterback like Trey Lance. If you can add what, like, Sean a Jameer, Tucker, Jameer or, Gibbs, or something Jameer like Gibbs, that. Yeah. Yeah. Jameer Gibbs to that running back core. Yeah, we don't like CEH, but I mean, Josh Jacobs, Jameer Gibbs, CEH. Should... Jacobs would also be a guy I would consider selling midseason if if uh, he's off to it. Because I think there's a chance this year that Josh Jacobs has like RB5 a Joe Mixon cal caliber year. And if he's scoring, you know, touchdowns at will because the Raiders offense is a top 10 unit in the league, then he might be a guy that you can sell straight up for like a mid-2023 first or, or maybe even more than that midseason if he's uh, really, really playing well. So that'd be a move that I would uh, potentially make as well. Um, we also have a couple trades that he made here. He made two trades. He gave up AJ Brown and LaVisca Chenault in exchange for CD lamb. And uh, looks like a third round pick in 2022 and a third round yeah. pick in 2023. So, I mean, for me, CD lamb versus AJ Brown, I have AJ Brown a little bit higher, but they're pretty much a wash I would say. And I would rather have two threes than LaVisca Chenault. So I, you didn't kill this guy in this trade, but I would take your side slightly. That's where I'm at as well. Uh, I, again, I have, I have lamb one spot higher, but that is the wash of all washes. Like they go within three picks of each other in startups for the most part. And then if I can, if you can tell me I can turn LaVisca Chenault into two, you know, extra third round dart throws this year, uh, give me that any day of the week, 2022 and 2023. So give me that any day of the week. Give me the two threes over LaVisca Chenault. So like your side there, uh, the other trade here he has listed is Daniel Jones, a 2022 second and Justin Ross for, Rashad Bateman. I mean, realistically, Daniel Jones is probably about a mid two type of valuation. So, I mean, if you're talking about a mid two, another two, and Justin Ross is like a, three, a UDFA four, wide eight. receiver, basically a fourth round Bateman. value. Give me Rashad Bateman there. Yeah. That's a great trade. I think um, Bateman would definitely be a guy that I would be looking to see what you can get. Like, as if Bateman's having a monster season next year, which I think outside of the top 10 dynasty wide receivers, I think Rashad Bateman might have the highest ceiling of any wide receiver in terms of how much he can ascend in dynasty value this time next year. Would it shock any of us if Rashad Bateman has 145 targets this year and is the dynasty wide receiver three, four, five, or six this time next year? Like it would not shock me whatsoever if he has a season like that. So he could be a guy that, you know, mid season you're able to evaluate and somebody's willing to give you like two ones for Rashad Bateman or something like that. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to moving him at that point in the season. But like Danny said, with this wide receiver core, you have a lot of flexibility to make moves. David Bell, Wandell Robinson, Garrett Wilson. Again, if these guys get out to monster starts and you could parlay them into huge, huge returns on your investment that you put into them, uh, then they're guys that I would be looking to move as well. You have to be able to fill out this quarterback and running back core in the future draft classes, and you're going to need assets to do that. And this wide receiver core, thankfully, is, is a way that you can uh, parlay that into some assets. Yep. No, I agree. So uh, we can transition to the next team that is going to be from Disno. And uh, right off the bat, I just want to quickly acknowledge uh, the way Disno was able to format this along with the charts, along with the information that you provided. I mean, got to give you a pat on the back, man, because this is uh, a lot of uh, stuff I would not be able to do personally. So you guys should be able to see the team on the screen. Post-grad fantasy football, 14 man, one, uh, one quarterback league, half PPR. He shows basically how his startup team has progressed into what the team is now. And you guys can see some of those upgrades uh, listed there. So he kind of just says here, my question stems from being in a 14-man league where I see about six teams that are likely to be just as competitive, if not more, for this season than me. I want to build a team that will dominate for years, especially after tanking in the 2020 inaugural season and 2021 seasons. He basically just said, would love to get feedback on the type of direction that I built this team to be. So when you're looking at, you know, where he started this team and where it's at now, like what are your main thoughts looking at this? Yeah, he's definitely done a great job of you know, trans transitioning to younger pieces when it was possible, right? Because you could see, I mean, like it looks like he had Alvin Kamara at one point. He transitioned from Alvin Kamara to Javante Williams as one of his main running backs. He was able to get younger at wide receiver for the most part. He was able to get Kyle Pitts to add to this team as well. So um, he's definitely done a great job in terms of uh, his ability to, to build out uh, a, t a team that's going to accumulate value going forward. Yeah, no, I mean, and the fact that you still have, in addition to this team, your 2023 first, I'm assuming, because this is one, uh, an extra 2024 first on top of the one you already have, 
And, you know, you basically just haven't given up any of your future assets, which is about the way you should be uh, attacking this team, given the fact that you've built this team on youth, you've be built this team on appreciability. So keeping that liquidity on this team, like, yeah, maybe you don't win this year. Maybe, you know, this is that which year. Which definitely that is not out of the range you, of outcomes. You, you absolutely you have can. a good team. You, you have a really good team. But the fact is that you've built this team based off hitting and based off uh, understanding the value of, getting assets that will appreciate your league mates, you know, who might be in a better position than you this year, their teams, I can guarantee you right now, don't have the long-term appeal that yours do, does. And you kind of, I mean, outline it here. You did say that uh, in the message on discord that although you're ranked, you know, middle of the pack for this season, uh, you're actually ranked as the third most valuable roster. I guess you, you know, you have a simulator or something that you calculated this, but either way, I mean, that's a really, really good place to be. You have the potential, you know, once you're able to transition, you know, that value into production to be able to take that next step. I would say, you know, use that 2023 pick, add another player, or maybe, you know, package that 2023 pick with a player to get an upgrade. Maybe, you know, you want to move up for Bijan or something with this team. I wouldn't mind it because you've built so much depth and so much talent uh, in your pool right there. Uh, regardless, if you want to make that type of move, I don't mind it. But overall, I do think that 2023 should be when your team starts materializing into one of those top, top flight teams from a production standpoint, especially in a 14 manner. Like this is yeah, a in a 14 team league, having a team as good as this, I, I think yeah. you might be underselling how good this team is. Oh, I mean, it's maybe a very good you team. have some monsters in your league. This league's been going on for a couple of years. So there's a chance that there's some better teams than this. But I mean, in a 14 team, one quarterback league, you have the best tight end and you can have. And especially in a 14 man league, that's going to matter a lot. Patrick Mahomes is a top three quarterback. You have. You know, your running back core is probably the weakest part of your team, but there's still going to be guys that I think are top 15 caliber running backs this year. Metcalf, Hollywood, Brown, and T. Higgins should be, you know, difference makers at wide receiver this year, and you have some pretty decent depth there as well with Smith and Ayuk and Claypool and guys like that. So um, I think this is a team, like Danny said, this is probably like a wait and see midseason. Maybe you need to make a move to push your chips into the middle if things are going well. If things aren't going well, maybe you sell a guy like David Montgomery before he starts to, to decline in value because he's, you know, going to be up in a contract year pretty soon. Um, and we don't know where he's going to be from a volume standpoint this time next year. This year, we know he's with the Chicago Bears. He's going to be the workhorse. But if you get to midseason and, you know, you're not competitive right now, I don't mind selling him off for, you know, if you can get a 2023 first for David Montgomery, I don't mind doing that. Just replace him in the draft class. Yeah, and I, I quickly want to outline how cool this was too. He actually has a, um, you know, he made a chart basically outlining how active players in his league are. So he has all of his other league mates listed in this and the amount of trades they've done per year to basically give him an idea of if he's trying to make a deal or if he's, you know, trying to go to an owner to make a transition, who's the most likely to actually make a deal. So I just want to outline that because that's like freaking cool as heck that he's basically just charted all the deals everyone in his league's done. Because, I mean, that's a competitive edge, knowing like who's more likely, more inclined to be wanting to move assets, be wanting to make deals in your league is something that you could definitely use to your advantage. So charting that, I, I don't know. I just found that dope. So I had to include it there. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is the type of uh, thing that you do for your home league, right? Cause I'm assuming this is his home league. He says post-grad fantasy football. I'm assuming yeah. this is the, your college buddies or whatever. This is the type of sh the effort that I go to in my home league. So I definitely appreciate when I see somebody do some shit like this. So yeah. Uh, general direction. This team is basically what the last thing that he asked for. You're you're in a house money year, really. Like yep. David Montgomery is the only guy that I would probably try and sell midseason if I'm not looking to compete because the rest of your team is young, is not going to lose any value anytime soon. I'm not uh, I'm not you know rushing to sell anybody else. So especially in 2023 when DK Metcalf presumably has a better quarterback, Hollywood Brown, um, still you know into his prime. Javante Williams maybe doesn't have Melvin Gordon. Uh, the rest of your team, Kyle Pitts in his third season, Patrick Mahomes still stud. Uh, quarterback this should be a team that's very very competitive 2023 if not competitive this year yep no for sure so uh great work there for a 14 manner yeah like Corey said you undersold this team this is a very very good team but either way we could move on to the next team that's going to be from tana so one quarterback ppr no tight end premium league i'll let you take it away with this team here yeah so in a one quarterback league you got justin herbert obviously the guy that you want to have there with zach wilson mac jones's depth uh you have saquon barkley Brees hall as your top two running backs uh drake london Traylon burks uh, Brandon Ayuk, mostly at wide receiver, not much going on at tight end with Austin Hooper as your top guy, but you do have four first round picks in 2023. He says probably too early. I'm assuming one of those is yours. Then you have three seconds with one early and then three firsts in 2024 with two seconds there as well. So um, you've built out a pretty solid uh, war chest, I would say, of draft capital, and you have some cornerstone pieces to build around. Um, in terms of like your actual team, 
Saquon Barkley obviously is not going to fetch you a ton right now because he's on the downslope because he can't stay healthy and stuff, but he'd probably be a guy that I would look to parlay into future draft capital mid season, because by the time your team is ready to compete, he's probably going to be 26, 27 years old. He's already 24 and a half or whatever. So um, he'd be a guy that I would look to sell once his value is up back to where it probably should be. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, looking at this, uh, you're sorry, I got lost for a second. Yeah, no, Saquon Barkley is the classic example of out of sight, out of mind, if you will, in uh, the fantasy football community. Because, I mean, we haven't seen him be the elite asset he is when he's healthy for the last two years. So, I mean, people are just ready to kick this guy to the curb. People are just ready to say, okay, you burn me twice, burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice, shame on me. I'm not touching you whatsoever again. And it's just, it's comical to me because we, we talked about when Saquon Barkley is fully healthy, he has one of the most untouched workloads in the entire NFL. He gets receiving production. Like we're not even just talking about, you know, 40, 50, like targets like Josh Jacobs, you know, Dalvin Cook. We're talking about when this guy's healthy, he's le a legitimate 100 target type of running back. And he is now playing in the best offense of his career. And more it's importantly, he has the cleanest bill of health he's had in a couple of years too, yes. because he's two years removed from the ACL, which we know has, I mean, as you brought up Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook didn't have his breakout season until he was two years removed from an ACL tear that he suffered his rookie year. So um, I think Saquon Barkley has a chance to really, really show people why he was the generational running back prospect that we saw coming out of Penn State. But uh, moving on to the rest of this team, uh, he has some pre-draft trades listed. We can go over those real quick. He traded away the 103 and uh, Christian Kirk in exchange for the 106, 206, and 211. I mean, depending on who you got at 106, I don't mind that trade. Uh, I can't see exactly who it ended up being because I don't think he actually made the made the pick he, here because he traded away the 106 and the 211 to go up for Burke. So, I mean, if we're looking at this, it's basically the 105 and the 206 for the 103 and Christian Kirk, which again, I am fine with because Traylon Burks is my 103. So the fact that you're able to get Traylon Burks and, you know, 206 and Christian Kirk's comparable, but if David Bell makes it to you at the 206, which I mean, you, we could see right here who he ended up going with at the 206. He ended up, he ended, okay, so he ended up moving the 206. But let's just say, you know, David Bell was in that deal. Regardless, it was David Bell and Traylon Burks for, what, Garrett Wilson and Kenneth Walker and Christian Kirk? Like, uh, number two trade, pre-draft, he uh, gives away uh, Zay Jones and the 202, and he got a 2024 yes. first. I don't know how the fuck yes. Zay Jones was a difference maker in that trade. but <laughs> Bro, he pushed um, it over the top. <laughs> yeah, easy, easy move to make yeah. there. Gave away a 2024 third, and he got uh, Gerald Everett and Paris Campbell by the looks of it. I mean... Sure, if you like those sure. guys, I don't. It, it's not a bad asset to give up. Yeah, he actually sent me one more trade, but he didn't send uh, put the the side that he got in. So I'll just it, it, let me yeah. know, Tano, what ended up happening. I can give you advice in the DMs. But basically, he has a couple questions here. This was the orphan team that he sent a couple months ago. So I guess this was on a previous episode. How did the draft go for me? Did I make the right move to get Burks? Alave and Jamo were still on the board. Did not really love the late second round of this draft at all guys I would have wanted before 205. That was pretty much a common sentiment. Nobody liked anybody after like the 205. Um, the right move, again, I, it would have all depended who was on the board for me at 103. Uh, you picked Drake London at 102. So I guess there was no chance that Drake London was yeah. there at 103 for you. Um, it doesn't also look like that you had any real conviction between Burks, Wilson, or uh, or Kenneth Walker. So if you want to just you know get the latest pick to secure one of those guys, and get some extra value on top of that. I don't mind that move whatsoever. Yeah, no, I I agree there. I mean, that's that's kind of how I want it. Like, if I can get a little little plus, a little value, and move down and still select within that tier, I'm fine with that. Again, like the only exception would be Drake London, given where he's going in startups, given you know that that opportunity he sets into or steps into with the Atlanta Falcons there, and of course his prospect profile of quite literally demanding a boatload of targets, 119 targets in the eight games he played. I would say Drake London would head that pack. But after that, I mean, Walker, Burks, Wilson, if you can get, you know, a 2023 20, three and move down and get any of those within that value, I'm, I'm more than fine with it. Yeah. So then he also has any other moves that I should look to do. I'm trying to get Har uh, Carter as a handcuff. Honestly, I wouldn't worry about that. No. If, if, if it doesn't cost you much, if you can get him for like an early three or something like that, or maybe a late two, if you really, really want it. Uh, I don't hate it, but um, I would probably just stick with whatever draft capital you were planning to give up uh, for Michael Carter. And then he also says, I'm trying to acquire Pat Fryermuth, but I don't know what the guy wants for him. Um, like me, he has a lot of tight ends. 
Uh, he said, my team is probably bottom three in the competing uh, in competing in the league for what it's worth. So yeah, like this guy's going to have an early pick. You want to secure Pat Frymuth. I agree. I think that's a good player to go get with this type of build because he's a good long-term tight end to build around and you don't really have one as it currently stands. But it really all depends what the cost is. If, if this guy's a competitive team and he has Pat Frymuth, you don't really have a tight end to give him back. Because if you had like an Ertz or something and you wanted to flip that into Fryermuth and add a second to Ertz to do that or a third to Ertz to do that, then I would make some sense. But it really all depends on the cost of Fryermuth because if you can get him for like a second and a third, I'm cool with it. But that's probably like the most I would give up for him. And also just get Mayer next year instead of trading for Fryermuth. You have four ones. You should be able, uh, be able to. You have three twos as well with one of them potentially being early. You should be able to secure Michael Mayer with one of those picks. So if you don't get... Pat for Ironmuth, I don't mind just just getting Mayer because those guys will probably be pretty comparable once Mayer's in the NFL in terms of their value. Yep. No, I, I agree with that. But uh, overall, I mean, he, he also says here, I have in, uh, waivers for Snoop Connor to drop Ahmed and Matt Breida to drop Tony Jones. Good moves. Yeah. Just yeah. Give me the give me the upside swing on on Snoop yeah. Connor rather than those guys that we kind of know what they are yep. at this point. And then with Matt Breida, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you're giving yourself insurance because I mean. Saquon Barkley has not been the most durable guy. At least Matt Breida has shown. Maybe he's not, you know, a great NFL running back. He's also not been the most durable guy either, but uh, that's just something. Yeah, Yeah. but like at least like we know when he's on the field, he's not awful at football. Like he can. Yeah, he's not Tony Jones. So yeah, give me the more talented running back. So uh, yeah, looking at this team again, there's you're pretty much just going to build this out through the draft. Um, You're well set up. You have a franchise quarterback. You have a, a like a, a stud foundational running back with Brees Hall. You have a, a big time trade trip with with Saquon Barkley, who should increase in value going forward. And you have a lot of uh, young receivers so far and plenty more draft capital to add to that. So let's move on to the final team of the video, which is uh, from Bellum, a one quarterback, 10 team half PPR league. You guys should be able to see this uh, team on the screen here. Uh, Josh Allen is his main quarterback in a one QB league. Uh, Travis Etienne, James Robinson, Tony Pollard, et cetera, at running back. Jerry Judy, Gabriel Davis, Chris Olave, uh, Christian Watson, et cetera, at wide receiver. Mark Andrews, Pat Fryermuth at tight end. And he has five ones in 2023. He has six twos in 2023, uh, two thirds, and then two firsts in 2024. So um, building out a productive struggle clearly has a, a lot of draft capital to be able to do that. What are your thoughts on this team when you kind of initially look at this? Yeah, the questions he does have here is that, you know, this is my home league and really the only dynasty I'm in. League is going on in its fifth year. Fifth year, he's placed second, and he, you know he just basically outlines uh, what happened. So overall, he just kind of wants us to go through what he's done in the off season and our general thoughts on it uh, before we go into some of the other stuff here. So looking at some of these trades, I mean, you were able to receive Nick Chubb uh, in a fourth. Okay, so this is mid season. So mid season, you receive Nick Chubb in a fourth in exchange for a 2022 and 2023 first. And I'm going to keep it brutally honest with you here. Uh, I, I think you got hosed on this deal. Yeah, and this is what prompted him to do the moves that he made because he he lists what his team looked like in the the start of the offseason. It was like an anti-FSC, Derrick Henry, Zeke Elliott, Nick Chubb type of running back core. And yeah. he was like, man, I don't know if I can win this year. So he decided to tear it down. And obviously moves like that was what prompted you to do that because you did get hosed in that trade. And, and uh, Nick Chubb definitely was not worth two first round picks, even to a contender at the time. Um, and then at January 22nd, which would have been after the season, he then traded away Nick Chubb uh, 2023, or sorry, traded away Nick Chubb, Terry McLaurin, the 206, 410, and a 2023 third received three ones in exchange for that. I think one first is enough for Terry McLaurin, one first is enough for Nick Chubb, and then the rest of that's pretty much just gravy for me. Yeah, I mean, this is an awesome deal. Like, realistically, yeah, one one for Chubb, one for Henry, or one for Chubb, one for Terry, let's just say that, and yeah, you get free value, an extra first and a second, basically, for the 206, the 410, the th- yeah, like you you took this guy to the woodshed, although you got taken to the woodshed on the re- previous Chubb deal, you uh, were able to set the tone back on the on your another league mate of yours, so great work there. This next deal, I mean, you're able to receive the 105, the 107, a 2023 one, a 2024 one, a 2023 two, James Robinson and Jared Patterson for Debo Thielen, the 207 and the 209, so realistically, I mean... Well, first of all, good on you for recognizing that this was yes. the right path to go down because your league market clearly overvalues production. Then, Because, like, Adam Thielen... Like, how is Adam Thielen that much of an upgrade to this deal? Like, to me, the 105 and the 2023 first is easily enough to move off of Debo not, Samuel. Not even close. Yeah, yeah like the I, 105 and the second might even be enough for me to move off of Debo Samuel. Yeah, I could genuinely, I mean worst case maybe even the 107 in the second like you know, yeah that's a little far that's a little far that, that, that's fair. you're, you're yeah. also consistently a debo hater so 
Uh, I, I've risen on him, but I mean, like, 105, let's keep it simple. Let's say that's Garrett Wills and Kenneth Walker and, you know, 2022. That's about Debo. Adam Thielen himself is probably like, is he worth that much more than like James Robinson? Probably not. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to spend too much time yeah. on this trade. Again, good on you for recognizing that rebuilding was exactly. probably the smart path to go down. March 2nd, uh, again, he I list, like I list the dates for all these. Uh, he received Travis Etienne um, 2023 first, and he says mine too, which is you know obviously the one that you wanted back. You trade away uh, Zeke Elliott, Derek Henry, Mike Evans, James Conner, just a lot of win now pieces for Etienne, your own first, Gabriel Davis, 2023 second, and Kenneth Gainwell. Again, the fact that you got your own first back is the important part of the steal. And your own first to me is worth, I mean, at least Derrick Henry and Mike Evans combined. Not even like more. Like, and then you got Zeke. ETN on top of that. Like, I would rather have ETN than Zeke and James Conner. And then again, the rest of that deal is just gravy. I do. Uh, like, I was just going to say, I would rather ETN in the first than every single other piece in that package. You're telling me, you know, 101, uh, Bijan, or at and least an early first at the at minimum. Or- Sure. Early first. I mean, like worst case scenario, you're looking at a JSN or a Boutte or someone like that. But he does say 101 because he's going to tear this thing down. Let's just say hypothetically. Top three pick in ETN, I would rather have than Henry, Zeke, Evans, Connor, and Henry. And I don't even think that should be a wild take. So if I'm looking at it like that, you got a free Gabe Davis, a free 2023 second, and a free Kenny Gain. Well, yeah, like, yeah, I'm taking value. Yeah, exactly. So um, draft day he has listed here, which is when his rookie draft was. He got uh, Terry McLaurin, 109, 110, and Josh Palmer in exchange for the 105, 107, Eno Benjamin, a 2024 fourth. We're not the highest on Terry McLaurin, but I think that's that's a pretty solid move. If you don't see a huge difference between 105, 109, and 110, I personally do if, if Garrett Wilson or Traylon Burks is on the board. But I think, I think still, even with that package, I think Terry McLaurin himself is probably worth the 107, 105 type of range. Um, so that kind of cancels each other out, and then you basically got two back-end ones for one of the earlier ones. I was just about to say, because that transitions right into the next deal, because Terry McLaurin wasn't on his team for too long. You basically, okay, let's just say it right now. I would rather two twos and a three than Dawson Knox. And then I would much rather Mark Andrews to Terry McLaurin. So if that doesn't tell you my thoughts on this deal, the fact that you're able to receive both of the better sides combined together in this package, like, yeah, you, you basically flipped Terry, like, again, like, ease sake, Terry McLaurin for Mark Andrews. That is a phenomenal move. And if we look at the other deal, 105, 107, am I crazy to say that like 105 and 107 is probably like Mark Andrews in like a, a two? No, that's not crazy. So then you you just profited free 109 and 110 pretty much? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, th- there's definitely a, a masterful job of tearing it down. You've, yeah. you've done a great job identifying, hey, even though my team's good, because a lot of people would look at a team with Josh Allen as their main quarterback in a one quarterback league. Derek Henry, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb, James Conner, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, Jerry Judy, Terry McLaurin. And he says it in his message. He's like, I probably could have competed this year. And I definitely agree. I think you could have. But being able to recognize that your, your clock would have been ticking a year from now, right? And a lot of these assets would have lost a lot of value. You might not have been able to get very much for them. And you sold while the iron was hot. Yeah, you're going to stink this year and probably not going to be that that great in 2023 either. But you are going to dominate this league going forward. And this yeah. is, like you said, it's it's in its fifth year. So we don't expect this league to fold anytime soon or anything like that, which is an important factor when you consider rebuilding as well. So I think you did a great job here. Yeah, and I mean, it's funny to me because, I mean, when I saw that first deal, I was like, oh, brother, are we going to see a bunch of these like for the rest of the trades that you have listed here? And kudos, you must have found us mid-season or in the off-season or whatever because you just uh, completely flipped the switch, you know, flipped the switch like, you're, you're, like your name is Drake. And you turn this thing into a monster like extremely well done yeah for sure so um again thank you guys first and foremost you guys would have heard it in the intro thank you guys for 50 episodes of dynasty decisions we didn't know the series was going to turn into anything we decided to call it rate my dynasty team initially and we did it one time and then we were like ah well you know people seem to like this so we'll keep doing it so 50 episodes deep into dynasty decisions the fantasy footballers a number of other people have ripped off the name which we definitely you know appreciate in the youtube algorithm so um, we love the uh, support that you guys have shown for this series. Again, anybody who's had their team reviewed or just you know commented on the video, we definitely truly, truly appreciate you. If you guys Im- enjoyed the video at any point, like, comment, subscribe. Congrats. And congrats to the winner of the giveaway. Um, and again, with that being said, peace out. We'll talk to you soon.